In the depths of the sky wanders light Silent in its journey through the endless night Welcome back to the Comet Chasing Channel. We've got several interesting comets to cover, including a big surprise from C2025A6 Lemon that we are excited to share with you. In addition to telling their stories, we'll show you how to observe the brighter comets yourself using a small backyard telescope or even binoculars. The big story is still the interstellar object, or ISO, a physical piece of another star system traveling for maybe billions of years and now cruising through our own little corner of the galaxy. That's 3i Atlas, only the third confirmed interstellar object ever seen. Huge deal. And calling it just an ISO undersells it. These things are cosmic treasure chests, pristine samples from other star systems. Fossils from another world. Exactly. They're time capsules. Normally we squint at faint light from distant star-forming disks, or trace the tiny changes in starlight from exoplanets, but this is a direct sample delivered to our doorstep. It can tell us about planet formation, chemistry, the building blocks of worlds. So our mission today is to put together what all the different telescopes and satellites have shown us so far. Right, starting with its surface. The Goodman spectrograph saw a very red spectrum, like the reddest objects in our outer solar system. That red color comes from complex carbon compounds cooked by ultraviolet radiation for billions of years. Think of it as an ancient cosmic sunburn. So it doesn't need to have spent time near its parent star to be red like the D-type asteroids. The UV exposure could have come from where it formed in its home system, or it could have slowly been basted in interstellar space. And other telescopes have confirmed this? Yes. The 3.8 meter semi-telescope measured colors that were just as red may be redder than D-type asteroids. Those are some of the most primitive bodies we know. SEMI also watched for two hours and saw hardly any flicker in brightness, so it's either rotating slowly, fairly round, or just uniform on the side we saw. Net result, very old, very red, very primitive. So we've got this ancient, weathered visitor, but it wasn't just sitting quietly. No. Hubble saw it active at 3.8 astronomical units, far from the sun, dust streaming from the sunward side, forming a faint tail. Estimates ran 12 to 120 kilograms per second of dust. But here's the puzzle. Spectra at 4.4 astronomical units showed no gas. None of the usual comet stuff like CN or C2. Dust without gas is strange. So how does dust get loose without gas lifting it up? That's the mystery. Normally sublimating ice drags dust with it. Maybe super volatiles were at work. Maybe surface stress. Maybe something we don't yet understand. Did gas show up eventually? It did. By late July, the Swift Observatory detected hydroxyl, basically water split by sunlight. That meant water was venting at about 40 kilograms per second, or 1.3 times 10 to the 27th molecules every second. Unusual twist. OH showed before CN, which usually appears first. That suggests a very different chemistry than solar system comets, which is just the sort of thing astronomers are excited to discover. And then it got even more interesting. Mid-August, Sphere X and NASA's infrared telescope facility found strong signs of water ice in the dust, plus a huge CO2 coma three arc minutes across, pumping out about 10 to the 27th molecules per second. The CO2 looked diffuse, not sharp jets, and their water limits were lower than Swift's, suggesting the activity varies with time or orientation. So dust first, then water, then a big wave of CO2. Complicated little visitor. Exactly, and fascinating. What about its size? Hubble capped the nucleus at under 2.8 kilometers radius, small, but here's the kicker. To produce 40 kilograms of water per second, at least 19 square kilometers of surface must be active. That's over 20% of its surface, while most comets are only a few percent active. In short, it's hyperactive. And the coma brightness confirmed that? Yes. Sphere X's infrared brightness would imply a 23 kilometer radius if it were all nucleus. But Hubble rules that out. That means more than 99% of the light came from the dust coma, not the solid body. Tiny engine, huge exhaust. So what's its backstory? 
the speed and trajectory point to the Milky Way's thick disk, an older population of stars. That ties it to cosmic noon, 9 to 13 billion years ago, when the galaxy was forming stars like crazy. 3i Atlas could be a relic planetesimal from that era, built under very different conditions than anything here. So bottom line, this isn't just another comet. Not at all. Everything about it feels slightly off. The ultra-red surface, dust without gas at first, OH before CN, the massive diffuse CO2, the small but hyperactive nucleus, and the likely origin in the thick disk from cosmic noon. It's a messenger from another time and place, carrying vital clues about how worlds form under conditions very different from our own. And who knows how many more are silently passing through the galaxy, just waiting for the solar system to encounter them. I've heard that we may have trouble tracking it as it swings by. Observing it near perihelion will be tough, almost hidden behind the sun, but scientists are trying to repurpose spacecraft already out there. Psyche, Mars orbiters, Juice, Europa Clipper, even Lucy might get a shot at imaging it or sampling its tail. At the moment, these are just possible opportunities. It will be up to the spacecraft instrumentation teams to see if they can make useful observations. I'd like to take a moment for some perspective on all this, given the sensationalism in the media being driven by our favorite Harvard astronomer turned crazy uncle. This comet can be considered anomalous, which means there are things about it that are unusual and that we are excited to understand. But here's the thing. Those of us who observe comets regularly, who follow each one as they come along, we often joke that comets are like cats. They both have tails and they do what they want. This is one of the reasons we follow them. Part of what we mean by this is each comet is interesting in its own right. To put it another way, every comet has anomalies. Consider 29P, which slips along where nothing ever happens, far from the inner solar system, never coming close to the sun, yet constantly exploding material into space again and again. This is a very interesting mystery that we are starting to unravel and it's teaching us about the processes that lead to comet outbursts. C-2014 UN-271. Bernardinelli Bernstein is another wild one. This comet was discovered at an astounding 29 astronomical units from the Sun, almost to the orbit of Neptune. Its nucleus is huge, at least 100 kilometers or 62 miles across, when typical comets are only 1 to 2 kilometers in diameter. These are just two extreme examples. When you get down into the weeds of detailed observations, there really isn't such a thing as a typical comet. And stay tuned. In our next segment, we're going to reveal a new mystery comet and a drama that unfolded just last week. As far as observations go, 3i Atlas is currently not visible in amateur telescopes unless equipped with a camera. It is passing through Libra this month. Okay, let's move on to the next cool comet. Right. Last March, C-2025. A6 Lemon was very faint, and nobody paid much attention to it. As the months passed, it quietly approached the sun without any observations being reported at all. On August 19th, Michael Yeager posted this image that showed the comet much brighter than expected. Subsequent observations have confirmed this. The problem is, with the large gap in observations since March, we can't tell if it had an outburst, if it has been brightening more quickly than expected, or both. Either way, it's very unexpected. Our primary concern on the channel is predicting how bright it will become in the following weeks, and this is rather difficult without knowing what's been going on. If it continues to brighten rapidly, it could become visible in binoculars, and possibly even to the unaided eye, later this month. There is a small possibility it could be an easy naked eye object in November. We will follow the observations as they are reported, and update our predictions on the Comet Chasing page, so keep an eye on the page. C-2025. A6 Lemon is magnitude 10 and may brighten rapidly. As the month opens, the coma is 5 arc minutes in diameter. The closest pass to the Sun will be on November 8th at a comfortable distance of 0.5 astronomical units. It will be visible in binoculars from a dark site in the Northern Hemisphere starting on the morning of September 16th. From a dark site near the equator, it will be visible in binoculars from the 19th through the end of the month. It's not observable from 30 degrees south. For those who may be wondering, 
That blue ellipse is the so-called UFO galaxy. We've started jokingly calling C2025K1 Atlas the Forgotten Comet. Maybe the overshadowed comet is a better way to put it. This comet has been putting on a nice show in small telescopes in the early evening and will continue to do so in September. The coma is 35 arc seconds in diameter with a diffuse condensation at the center. It's moving from Libra into Virgo. 2025 K1 will pass within 0.3 astronomical units of the sun on October 8th and is not likely to survive this close passage. So if we want to see it, now is the time. 2025 K1 is visible from a dark site in the northern hemisphere in small telescopes very early in the month from the first through the evening of the third. The best time will be in the early evening. It will be visible in a six inch, 15 centimeters telescope until the evening of September 11th. It'll be better in the southern hemisphere, visible in small telescopes in the early evening from the first through the 27th. Lastly, those of you with 12.5 inch or larger telescopes should check out 240p neat in the mornings, visible from both hemispheres. Well, that's it for another month of comet chasing. Don't forget to keep an eye on the comet chasing page for comet news, and we will see you back here with an update in October.